Good afternoon. My name is Nicholas Port, and I'd like to talk to you about a real-time solution that allows for spatial insights for safer communities. We're going to utilize Modesto, California as the use case for this topic. And they're leveraging an ArcGIS environment in order to facilitate this request. So let's take a look at the initial challenge that that agency had. The original challenge was to take together all of the agency's disparate data, which when an analyst was looking at this data for crime statistics and other metrics would take hours and hours on end, sometimes multiple days to consolidate that data and then get a holistic view of what was happening within their agency. So the agency wanted to take that information and put it together in a unified environment. They also wanted access to that information in real time. So they took on the big challenge of implementing a real-time crime center. And the purpose of that crime center was to improve public safety. They recognized that they had all of this information in multiple silos throughout the department and throughout the city. They also wanted to increase that situational awareness with each one of the officers throughout the police department, on the various shifts, in the investigations bureaus, in the administration, and then also provide additional details to city officials. So what we did with Modesto is we helped them with the use of GeoShield to install a software solution that integrated all of these data sources into one. And if we take a look back at what has happened over the years, we've been able to work with that agency and we're continually enhancing their capabilities within their real-time crime center and as a whole for the police department. The captain at the police department recently said that they've been able to identify the importance of being able to track their assets and they understand that the occurrence of crime within that spatial relevant environment and analyze data from multiple disparate systems has really enhanced their abilities for the agency. And they've also been able to go one step further, not only seeing their assets, but integrating their video solutions. These are cameras that are set up at the intersections of their city, on the exterior of municipal buildings, and they're able to identify where people are when a call is occurring. And it's really challenged them to reduce crime. And the police department and the real-time crime center as a whole has identified that solutions like this are a first multiplier in their efforts to reduce crime. So the Modesto Police Department solution is a public-private partnership between the city itself and Spatialytics. They have a unified single user interface that consolidates those disparate data sources together. And it gives them the ability to visualize, identify geographic locations, analyze the information, and they have access to all of that data in real time. They also have the ability to increase citizen and officer safety and it really helps drive them through their intelligence-led policing methodologies and in their reduction of crime throughout the police department. And ultimately, the quality of life throughout the city is improved. So here's a look at the Modesto Police Department Real-Time Crime Center. As you can see, it's a smattering of different consoles, different users, and then they have the large visual displays when they're running an op. And I actually happened to have the opportunity to sit in on an op, which was a simple op. It was a protest that was occurring. And seeing the inner workings of the police department reminded me of the times when I worked at my police department and we would have our mobile command units and our operations center set up back at the police department and the collaboration that was occurring but the really interesting thing about this solution was seeing how they were able to access all of this data in real time. And they were able to visualize it right on screen, seeing where their units were, seeing where the calls for service were happening, who was calling in. They were able to pull up live video feeds as well as they were utilizing 
some drones at the same time to monitor the crowd of this protest. So that police department solution takes all of this disparate data and gives them different tools to visualize it, to report on it, and to really drill in and then turn that information into actionable intelligence, as you can see on the right. Another result of this solution is the ability for the police department to take proactive action on an occurring call. So spatial technology really streamlines their workflows and it reduces the transaction time. So when a new call for service is received in the dispatch center from that CAD system or from that dispatcher, that call is immediately visualized inside of the dashboard. The operator can then see and interact with the call, as well as other things like live feeds from video cameras and the vehicle locations from police vehicles. So we take an example that was given to us by the captain that I mentioned at the beginning of the PowerPoint. They had a hostage situation that was occurring in the neighboring jurisdiction. During this incident, the captain walks into the real-time crime center and he asks the analysts and the real-time crime center operators to pull up this incident on screen. And when he did, he took these photos from his phone because he was so impressed with the amount of information he was able to receive in a matter of seconds. He was able to identify very quickly all of those little red dots, which indicated those are units that are actually on scene. So he knew that they had ample support, but he heard the call coming in over the radio and it was a hostage situation with a child victim. Being the SWAT commander, he took that initiative and understood that they were going to initiate a, call, a SWAT call out. But he already also knew that he had SWAT trainees out working right now. They were in a field op doing training. So he contacted that operations manager and let that sergeant know that that call out was going to happen. Instead of sending out a full call out, he contacted the dispatch office and asked them if he had any updates. And then he contacted his SWAC operator and also let them know. And ultimately when that call out happened, it was only one squad that had to respond because they had ample support on scene. So instead of overwhelming a situation with too many bodies, they were able to provide the appropriate response to an incident as it was occurring and safely rescued that child victim and apprehended the suspect for this case. So as a result, you're able to visualize those active calls for service in a dashboard very similar to this. And I'll be able to pull that up for you in a moment to show you exactly what it looks like. And from those active calls for service, you can also incorporate live video feeds and active vehicle locations. These can be localized to the city or to that jurisdiction that's specific to the location or the locale, or you can also go out and expand it countywide if you'd like to. All of those assets are just additional data sources for us to pull in. And then when you're able to look at those active calls for service in the vehicle locations and camera locations, you really get a sense of that situational awareness. This entire environment is completely interactive. Having this information at your fingertips really enhances that intelligence-led policing capability. But when you look at real-time response, you also have to take into account what has happened in the past to understand exactly what an officer is going to be walking into. Have there been previous incidents occurring of a like nature around that area? Take, for example, burglaries or stolen vehicles. I respond to a call for service after I've spent a weekend off and I'm responding to a stolen vehicle. It would be very interesting and nice to know how many other stolen vehicles happened within this area, maybe two or three city blocks or within my actual beat or patrol area. And then I can also take that information and look at directed patrol activities to really enforce my presence as an officer and reduce the amount of crime that's occurring in that community. And then we get a good sense of who the known offenders are. So the result for looking at historic crime gives us the ability to look at statistics and criminal pattern. 
and also identify known offenders related to a specific offense. And we can do sorting and filtering and buffering on those individuals to really drill into individuals who are key persons of interest for a specific crime. This information is then shared with other members of the agency in what they have as intelligence-led policing operational meetings where the lieutenants for the different jurisdiction beats and districts report on the information that's provided to them from these intelligence tools. And they're able to identify very quickly the crime history, the patterns and the detection. And they can also pull these things up in real time while they're in these meetings and drill into them and see exactly what's going up, going on up to the minute. So we've given a good example of what can be accomplished and what is being accomplished with agencies utilizing spatial technology and crime management. But another thing that's a capability that we're getting ready to launch with the Modesto Police Department is a public camera registry. So this is a partnership within the community. That partnership allows citizens, businesses, and other entities throughout your community to log into a simple portal voluntarily and provide information about the cameras that they might have at their disposal. As we said, it's completely voluntary. So the information they provide might just be that we have cameras on our premise, here's our address. And if something were to happen, the officer or the detective could reach out to them and ask them if they happen to have any cameras that captured video footage of that incident that they're interested in during that time frame, And then it's up to the citizen to provide that information voluntarily back to the officer, whether or not it was captured or not. So let's take a look at GeoShield and how an agency is able to utilize this. So as you're seeing on screen, this is the dashboard. On the left-hand side, you have all of the calls for service, whether they're pending or dispatched. And you notice as I hover over them, you're able to see the actual locations. This is taking simple database information and geospatially enabling it. And then on the right, we have vehicle locations and unit statuses. So two different data sources being brought together to visualize the locations of officers. Now, because this is a law enforcement environment, I'm not going to be able to click on any of these items and display any of the results, but you can see very quickly how powerful this information becomes to an analyst or to a watch commander or to a, an officer as they're driving around the city, as a watch commander's observing what's going on throughout this community and controlling what's happening, and as a crime center person is monitoring to provide additional input and feedback to the officers responding to specific calls. And then when you want to incorporate live video feeds, it's just a little configuration change that then incorporates live video streams coming in down here in the bottom right panel that you can then enlarge and shrink. And you also can take control of these cameras if you have that pan tilt zoom control capability. And you can enlarge and shrink any of those video feeds as they're coming available. And these are live feeds, and you can also see the locations of all of the cameras throughout the entire city by either clicking on a list or also visualizing them on screen with a simple click of the mouse. And then when we go into crime analysis, crime analysis gives us the ability to look at multiple disparate data sources. And those multiple disparate data sources are then able to be queried or filtered on based on a specific crime type or crime category. These also can be things like arrests. And if we wanted to search for these specific things, we just click through the little prompts, choose a time parameter, and then display the information as it's relevant to what we're looking for. And the information is then visualized on screen for us to look at and view. And so you can see very quickly that we're able to see all of those individual calls that I pulled up and the specific counts for all of those residential vehicle and business burglaries that are happening throughout the city. So I hope you enjoyed what we were able to present to you. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thank you. Mm -hmm.